Okay, I'll call this uh, meeting of the City of Kerrville uh, Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Uh, Dorothy, would you call roll, please? Yes, sir. Bob Waller? Here. Garrett Harmon? Here. Don Barnett? Here. Michael Siegerman? Here. Rustin Zuber? Here. David Jones? Here. Marty Leonard? Here. Thank you. Hey, we do have a quorum. Uh, number one, visitor citizens forum. Any person with business not scheduled on the agenda is encouraged to briefly speak their ideas to the commission. Please fill out the speaker request form and give it to the commission's secretary prior to the meeting. The number of speakers will be limited to the first 10 speakers, each speaker limited to three minutes. No formal action can be taken on these items as the Open Meetings Act requires formal action. Items be posted on an agenda no later than 72 hours before the meeting. If formal action is required, the items be placed on agenda for a future meeting. Uh, consent agenda. All items listed below in the consent agenda are considered routine or ministerial in nature and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion of items unless a commissioner or citizen so requests, in which case the items will be removed from the consent agenda considered separately. Uh, item 2A is approval of the minutes from the January 19, uh, 2017 meeting. Uh, 2B is approval of the minutes from February 2nd, 2017 meeting. And item 2C is approval of the minutes from the March 2nd, 2017 meeting. I presume that uh, we reviewed these. I'll accept a motion or any amendments that need to be made. There's one minor typo in the uh, March 2nd. Item 2A, it, it refers to Mr. Robertson as opposed to, and Mr. Browning. So. Mr. Robertson was not here. Yes, at the end of 2A. Right in the middle. Okay, Dorothy, if you'll make that amendment, please. Any other noted changes? If not, I'll accept the motion for all three simultaneously. I move that uh, all three uh, minutes be approved with the uh, noted change. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Now I have a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Passes 5-0. Thank you. Item number three on the agenda, 3A. Uh, review and discuss home occupations as defined in Article 11-1. Dash 357 of the City of Kerrville, Zoning Code, page 8. Uh, Gordon. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, Senator. Uh, if the Commission will remember back in the first week of April, we brought to you the idea of, of developing a, a specific section in the ordinance that would deal with home occupations. So it's better to find them. Uh, define their locations, define some of the uses, define some of the uses that were prohibited, and we went down a list uh, of things we would we would look at. What I put together after that meeting was is a draft uh, section that would be included in the in the zoning ordinance that it, if you and council approved that would define and uh, identify home occupation. So what I presented to you today is a draft, very rough draft ordinance. This is for discussion only. We won't be, we won't be making any 
formal presentations or formal acceptance of this. This is just a place to start talking. I also uh, asked uh, uh, Danny Bass and Donna Bauer from uh, Code Enforcement to, to be here today because they're the ones who enforce this. And, and they're the ones who are going to need to, to have a clear, uh, defined ordinance for them to, pro for them to enforce out in the field. Uh, also, we put together, Donna put together, a, a slide presentation of some current home occupations in the city and to show you what, what they look like, what we would like them to look like, and what we would like them not to look like. Okay? So, um, the, the first slide Good, is, the bad, and ugly? Yeah, we've got some of those. Um, as you can see, this is a, an art studio. You know, it's not too bad. Um, we've got, this is a plumbing office. Now, from the street side, you wouldn't know that this guy operated a plumbing business from his house. This is, um, and, and Donna says this lady does massage, facial massages, and that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, it, it, it absolutely, there is no uh, adverse impact to the neighborhood for something like that. Uh, a lawn care business. An architect, child care facility. The fence kind of identifies that a little bit to keep the keep them inside. And this is what you don't want to see. This is an auto repair shop over on Methodist Encampment. Now this guy, Dan, correct me if I'm wrong. This guy advertises on the internet and other places. And, and what the, 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 the photo doesn't show, let me go back. What the photo doesn't show are, is generally the times that I've been down Method and Scatman are the cars that are parked up and down the street. This is the front? This is the front? Yes. Yeah, yeah, this is the front. This is. <coughs> yeah, I've, I've driven by this before. I've seen this street. It's now, is that only within oh. code? No, sir. We well, have. Yeah. This is one of the examples that we're, we're looking at is the, the carport was put up without a building permit and we have been um, in court and uh, waiting for a court to um, bring it to the court for a jury trial. We've been uh, doing this in July, well, I think it's June, July, will almost be a year trying to get this thing down. But uh, when you look at the home occupations out there, like I said, most of them don't have an impact on the neighborhood at all. It's that one, it's that one individual who decides to open a car repair business and then he just puts it all over the street or the, the artist studio for one. It just didn't look too bad there. That one, you'll probably remember that case. We, we took that case um, almost to court and then, then since we didn't have anything but a definition, then, then uh, legal staff decided to dismiss the case. But you, you can imagine dummies hanging from trees, uh, piles of cans and debris and whatever that were artistic displays all over the yard. Um, if you're familiar with the term pickers, you know, where folks go out and buy junk and bring it back, all under a carport on the side of the house, completely full of the stuff she would take and, and assemble the stuff inside her house and then take it and sell it, you know, at, at, at markets or whatever around the hill country. Um, Ordinance clearly says no storage of outdoor materials, you know. Had a lady across the street from that who, was, who had her house for sale. Was having trouble selling her home because they'd come out and look at this. We could not act on it because we had no ordinance to act on. We only had a definition. Code enforcement's job is not to go out and harass people, you know. Code enforcement's job is to try to get voluntary compliance with things that are out there and to try to, you know, look out for everybody's concerns. And when we don't have any way of of when it gets to that post that point and we have no way of doing anything about it, then it just it just fails for us. You know, we, we can't help Are these people. two uses that you've shown us that you're not happy with conforming to the existing code? There is no there is no, there is no ordinance to, to enforce. I can't no, enforce it. All we have so is a definition. Based on what I've read here, even if you pass this new repair facility, 
you're not qualified under the new under the code, but it's an existing non-conforming. Well, well we have Danny and I have discussed that that, that section of, of the draft. Um, since I have since we sent it out, and we're gonna we're gonna recommend a couple of modifications to that. We'll take that obviously through legal, but if you look at our sign ordinance, we have legal non-conforming uses of signs that were in effect before the ordinance. However, the ordinance did spell out except for, and it went in and looked at portable signs and and all different types of signs that even if they were existing at the time, were no longer going to be allowed. If it's possible, if legal can can put that in the ordinance, I think that that there's no room for for car repair business in a residential neighborhood. That's in my personal opinion. But, you know, uh, when you come up and you find engines sitting in the driveway and whatnot, yeah, it's just a bad thing. Yeah, the, 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 the case with, with the nonconformity of, uh, and, and allowing nonconforming uses, which is normally when you, when you change a zoning order so you do something, you allow that use to just fade out on its own. You know, Danny's gonna feel more comfortable if we put in there except for now the other argument would be that since this isn't legal in itself because we don't have a provision in the ordinance that we can enforce, we can't enforce this, how could we enforce it as a non-conforming use? So, but it'd be simpler just to put in an accept clause in there and list uses that, that the commission and the council don't want to see as home occupation. Okay. Let's take this guy here with the yeah. carport. If that is required to have a permit, mm -hmm. You have to take him to court to get yes, him to. You yes, cannot sir. just we, we issue a citation. We, we issued issue a citation. We, <coughs> we issued a stop work order immediately when we found it. You know, and, and we had complaints from right. uh, past mayors that had saw it, and uh, we went out the day they were assembling it and put a stop work order on it. Uh, told them they were required to have a permit. Now, if he met all of his, since we don't have any design standards necessarily in the city of Kerrville, if he would have met his setback requirements and whatnot, may not have been anything I could have done about that. But his setback for the front building goes all the way to his existing garage. So that entire structure is in the setback and needs to be taken down. But even though I wrote a, we wrote a citation and, went to, and we, we put that in the court system and everything else, it keeps, you know, uh, well, I need a lawyer. So when it's it comes to appeal, the, so it keeps, a step. it's a lot. Well, okay, we'll give you 30 more days or 60 more days. Reset it for trial. They, and then they say, well, we'll do a pre-trial meeting. Well, then doesn't show up for the pre-trial, and they reset that. If you so, win, though, what is the what is the penalty? Well, we may have to go civil judgment where the city can go in there, and, and we may have to file a civil case on where the city can go take it down. Now they could go in and fine. It's not a jailable offense, but they could set a fine up to two thousand dollars a day for being in violation. But to physically take it down, it's my understanding that if the city were to go in and take it down, we would have to uh, file a civil uh, suit against the, the guy to be able to go in and do well, it. What you need in this, though, is that you need enough strength in the ordinance that you can get people to comply. If, right. if I didn't get well, a permit and then I'm in violation, if the penalty is two or three, I mean, what's it cost to put up an awning like that? Six or seven thousand? Yeah, probably. Hey, I'm not going to spend six or seven thousand to keep it up. Well, a, a reasonable person wouldn't, but you know, if you can drag it out in court by coming to court on your first hearing and saying, "Well, I need to get legal representation," and the court delays allows you thirty days to get legal representation, and then the legal, it just goes on. They're playing due process, and, and it, it keeps going on and on and on. We were scheduled June, was it sixth? Not June. I'm sorry. It went back April. April. We we. Came to court supposed to be a jury trial. Jury, everyone showed up for the trial. The defendant didn't show up. Said his leg was swollen, so he didn't show up. So they've reset the trial. Does he have legal representation? His lawyer now has signed off of it. He's not part of the case anymore. Okay. Doesn't have it. So now we're supposed to go back uh, in June, in uh, June 19th, I think it is, for another jury trial. In, in these order, kinds of in these kinds of instances, staff relies on voluntary cooperation. We go up and say, you're in violation. Right. Oh, well, I want to get right. And then people will work towards getting right. right. This guy has pretty much said, okay, so what? Take me to court. Well, that's, oh. what, that's what they've been doing well, for a year. They've been money <laughs> repairing cars in the meantime. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Under, under, the, under your, you know, the, this is a draft. Once this ordinance gets passed, it plainly says no engine repairs or car repairs in residential. That's our okay. plan. Once that thing is passed, Let's say you've got this ordinance. Yeah. At that point, you go to him and say, you've got to shut this thing down. Then, well, then, then if it falls into the zoning ordinance, 
and the zoning, the current zoning ordinance has a, ha, it, it would be a finable offense of two thousand dollars a day. I would write a citation that was in violation, yeah. and that would still would he, go to the court. He gets no grandfathering here. Well, that's we're not going to get. We're not going to grandfather this. That's guy. what we're wanting to put in as far as the home, as far as the car repair, is that it is not that that is not an allowed illegal non-conforming use. That we don't want to let that I agree. slide. It would be an exception. Now that's that yeah. that's up to legal to tell us. I guess if we're we're able to do that, but that's what we want to do with it. And it's not just him specific, it's anybody that wants to open up a car repair business, you know. And we've had over the years people come and go that started them up and then, then went out of business and left, you know. But this one's been there for a while. And it's, uh, as you can see, the, the reason for his, his, his uh, carport was that uh, you're required to screen a vehicle if you're in the car repair business, according to the zoning ordinance, right? <laughs> so he, we, we told him that... Uh, we went over there first no. because we had a complaint about the home occupancy, about the car repair business. Well, it's allowed in the ordinance, you know. So we said, yeah, but, you know, it's supposed to be screened. And I said, I don't know what kind of room you have around here. I don't know what you can do with it, you know, but uh, these cars cannot be exposed out here like this. And next thing I know, he starts putting up the carport, and we run up and put a stop work order, and thus here goes the legal issues of it, you know. So we've been tied up in court. Now. So this was his attempt to screen it? Yeah, he was going to close in. It doesn't really call, qualify as a carport, quite frankly. The definition of carport is open on two sides. That first one is butt against the house up there, and it's only open on the back. It really Ooh. qualifies as more of a garage addition <laughs> to the house, and that's still in violation of his setback. Setbacks goes all the way to the garage, the existing garage. That thing is completely in there, and I'm having it's taken us this long to try to get into court to get that out of there. Well, I think, based on what I've read, what's existing, which is not an ordinance, and what we're working towards will give you the, the right to stop things like this. Uh, uh, yes, sir. It will give us the power to at least try to start something into the court system to get it resolved. At this point, I could just get kicked out of the If you had this court. today, how many people would you I file? don't have that many of them around, but they do surface from time to time. This is the one that's front and center. We passed uh, one the other day off of, I think it was, where is it? West Shady. Yeah, West Shady area that looks like somebody's repairing cars. Again, we're not out to go out and harass folks, and if it's just one car and it's just somebody helping a neighbor or doing whatever, no, no, code enforcement's not overly concerned with that. When you come up like this and they're parked in the parking lot in the church across the street and they're parked up and down the street and there's multiple ones under here and motorcycles under there and he says, there's a junk car in the backyard too, you know, mm -hmm. it's a dead giveaway. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah most of the, the most of the home occupations look like this. Yes, I mean they look like child care. There's a land survey. You wouldn't know if there was a land survey. No, right? so, I mean this is this is what you're pushing or you're this is what you're working towards, and you, every once in a while you get one of these, and that's what gives sometimes gives us all a bad name, is that we're harassing this guy, but we're not. Harassing this guy. And we have a lot. Of, you know? We have a lot of neighbors who are very upset and want to know, you know, what's code enforcement doing? Well, code enforcement has done what it can as far as it's in the court system. So we're okay with. We'll get that removed, but then we go back to the the all well, repair the, business. the citizens of Kerrville rely on you guys to keep the community or the neighborhood right. in compliance. Right. And, and this guy's out of compliance. And you only hear usually about the ones that's, that are sticking out like that, a sore thumb that, you know, we're not able to get it out of there because we're waiting on the courts to do what they need to do. But we did, since the year to date, we did 251 complaints filed in the code enforcement, and only five of those ended up in court action. The rest were all voluntary compliance that we were able to gain. So we work hard at going out in the community and being you know, really nice with folks and said, we really need to get this taken care of. And we play on their good graces. And most of the time, people, you know, may have to make several trips to them. They come into compliance. This one doesn't come into so, compliance. So his carport is not compliant? No, sir. Oh, yes, sir, that's right. Okay, there's no, there's no code, there's no zoning or anything right now. If his carport, let's just have that, if his carport was compliant, is that a conforming use for that house? If it were compliant, it would be a conforming use. Yes. The draft of this thing right here says any home occupation that was legal in existence and not operating in violation of any local, state, or federal law, but that is not in full conformity with these regulations, would be allowed to stay. 
And and that's where we we were going to step in and add, except for the following uses. This was a rough draft. Yeah, it's yeah, going to be the conforming regulations. Yeah, right. yeah we're we're going to, you know, I said in the preamble of this, this is sort of a compilation of, of ordinances that from all over that I've pulled and put together. Uh, the, there's a lot of room for flexibility, and 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 none of this is set in stone. I mean, you know, we have, I have set down a sort of a, a list of operational standards. That, that are pretty common in other ordinances, but they don't have to, we're not, you know, married to any of them. The same with the use, the permitted uses and the uses that aren't allowed. Well, to me, there's a lot of buildings in this town that are abandoned or run down or not being taken care of. That's the kind of stuff to me that needs to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. They either need to clean it up or get rid of it or the city gets the property or yeah. something. I mean, they should, I don't, I agree with your idea of trying to work with them. But they should not be allowed to sit there for year and year. And I mean, sitting. I agree. I've lived for 20 years now, and I see property that's been sitting abandoned on 27. 27, yeah. For for the entire 20 years, right. and it, it, that whole block is a block there. You know where where I'm talking about. It's just it's, it's a it's horrible to attract people to Kerrville. I agree. That's and great. somebody there needs to be ordinances <coughs> that allow people some time to get it squared away, mm -hmm. or or Fix it. I mean, right. I mean, I'm. I don't want to take their property, but <coughs> my goodness, I don't want to look well, at it either. Kerrville is a huge property rights city. Yeah, I mean, they know it is. On that, and um, a lot of a lot of the structures you see, not necessarily falling down, but they're, they're close they're, to they're it. They're close to it. Uh, I don't want to go inside. And, and so, yeah. you know, um, in council and and you guys and the building board. Uh, to agree to tear it down and then go through the end of it, the legal end of it, sometimes can take quite a while and or un, un, uh, unwilling to do so. But uh, we're going to, from my understanding, I've been told that they're going to increase our uh, special services budget to address tear downs in the next budget cycle. So we hope to move Good. forward on some couple of properties we've got in mind that okay. we would like to see. Good. Go. I think our charge today, Gordon, is to maybe go through this from the beginning, I've made notes. I think everybody else probably has questions. But I think that uh, yeah. maybe the most expeditious way, just start with the Roman numeral I. Just you guys start where you want to start. Now, you know, one of the things in, in this that I put was that under the purpose, and I think you see the purpose. What we want to do with this is we don't want the character of the neighborhood to be affected by any of the uses. That's the idea. <coughs> and you can see that in, you know, in all of these slides except for one, the, the neighborhood is not impacted by these uses. You know, well, it's just, two, it's always maybe, the one maybe guy. Maybe two, that art. Yeah. <laughs> that art. Art. Yeah. yeah. Well, art, art is in the, you know, that's one of those things that, you know, I, I know art when I see it, right? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I know think. Junk, I know junk when I see it. Junk when you, yeah. I think the purpose is, is pretty well said. Yeah. Any comments? Yeah, I, the purpose is good. Mm -hmm. I agree. Then the next phase would be the registration required. Yeah, this is the one that we talked a little bit last time. Yeah. And, and I, I've really been thinking about this one and trying to envision this without a registration and seeing if, <coughs> that's, if that's possible. I mean, this guy wouldn't have registered no, anyways. No, this guy wouldn't have registered. Um, it would have, it w it would have come, up, come to light when somebody made a complaint. So The, 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 idea, the, the idea behind the registration is... is is really more to help staff than it is to, um, you know, mark somebody as a home as a, a person who uses home occupation. It, it is <coughs> so when they call and say, um, "Did you know that the you know my neighbor's a landlord?" <coughs> well, we would have it on the list. Say, "Yeah, we do." And he, when he came in, he registered his, his his home business. He agreed to this set of of. of of operational standard and he signed a little form and we've got it in the file mm -hmm. and and then and then it, unfortunately it's Donna that does this she would have to go out and make sure he's still living up to those criteria then we're done 
Yeah, but I think that's the strongest part of your enforcement. Yeah, uh, without that, without that registration, then every time that you know, a phone call comes in, she has to go out and check. You say, oh, we didn't know this. Did you, did you know? Well, you have to. You can do your home occupation, but did you know you have to do this? Right. Well, I didn't. Well, know I think this is also a legal element that helps you in your case yeah, because exactly. yeah. if I did not file a request for registration. And get and, get, and didn't get that. If I didn't get approved, particularly, yeah. then you've got a tr you've got a tracking device. But I think it shows a legal step that you've taken, offered me an opportunity to register my business. Yeah. And if I didn't do that, then I didn't wasn't in compliance. So well, it's a step in the process. Well, you're not operating legally. Yeah, and it's, it's and you no, know it's not. Illegally. That's right. Illegally. Yeah. The, the idea is not for Big Brother to be swooping down on, on these people. No. The idea is just to it's as much to keep the na to know let the neighborhood know that we know what's going on as it is to have this guy register with the with the city. Um, let me ex you know express a little concern on the registration. Just you know. Let me be devil's advocate a little bit, especially since I am home occupation. Which house is your defender? <laughs> the white stucco one, actually. <laughs> um, I guess my concern with registration is not that you know to not comply with any of the guidelines that we set, but more the fact that you know registration generates a list. That list gets bigger, and then takes more time to manage. And then at what point does a fee need to be assessed in order to cover the time to manage that list? And, and so I guess my concern is, is getting to a, a, free, a fee structure based on generating a registration list. Then that's not something I'm in favor of. My opinion is, is that major reason for this ordinance at all is to protect the neighborhood because when people move in their residential neighborhood they're moving in their residential neighborhood they, they're there they don't want to be in the business district yeah. they're not there because they want to have home-based businesses or whatever they are so this is really I mean my opinion is this is to protect the residents that live in the neighborhood to make sure that if there's going to be a legal home-based business there it, it, it operates is registered and, and operates under the guidelines well I, and I'm all for the business operating under the guidelines I, I'm all for that I think that's just a noble cause I just think it can be done without the registration I think the bad actors are never going regis to register so the only and, and then there's going to be another group of people that just don't want to register because they do something on the internet and they're not going to register uh, so you're going to well, have a small a group of people that are registering and I don't, I don't see what good it accomplishes. I, I, I still I haven't heard that. I with you. I think everybody that's operating legitimate home-based business is going to register. And if, you're, if, you're not, if there's a reason you're not registering, there's a reason you're not registering. Eventually, if you're operating a home-based business, the neighbors are going to know it. No, well, that's not, I don't agree with that. A lot of home-based businesses, the neighbors don't know about it. I would say the majority of <coughs> home-based businesses in Kerrville, the neighbors do not know about it right now. I think what you'll see, I think what you'll see is a lot of people that know there's a home-based business going on that creates a nuisance is the one you'll hear from well, yeah. once I mean, this is passed. I mean, it's like, it, it, it's like the, the, the car repair guy. I mean, I don't think, you know, I don't think that we went out and looked for this. Well, no, we, we, we're mostly reactive. We do something yeah. like But if you had registration, you wouldn't be reacted. So we'd, we'd know it was there. If he right. registered, you know, we'd know he was there. Right? Mm -hmm. This is, you know, th that. this is a um, a part of the of an or of the ordinance that is. It, it generally it generally uh, you know ensures debate amongst the commission and the councils when it goes to council is how to how to do this. Um, it, it's never, I don't think, it's, it's certainly not my intention that it ever be a, a, a fee-based registration. Um, you know, can I guarantee that? You know, no, I can't. Uh, it is, uh, it, it does take, t take time to create, it takes time to maintain, it takes time to research, but, you know, we, and, and what we do in our office, we do that kind of stuff every day. Um, you know, I think it does help in identifying the, the, the home-based businesses. Um, 
some people, when they're looking for a, for a house, they will come in and ask, well, what's going on around us? You know, they don't, you know, sometimes specifically ask about home-based businesses. There's some other um, items that they'll come sometimes and ask about. Uh, but, you know, the, 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 the wise, the, what I always say, I always say the smart home buyer is, has, has a list of questions that they go down and they come into our office and ask those questions. And, and this would be one of them. Is there anybody operating a home-based business in our neighborhood? Well, my comment on registration required, you say prior to conducting, I think it should be maybe new or existing as opposed just to and also somebody hadn't started yet. I think I did I read something about it, like it would have to be on an, you'd have to reapply annually. I mean, to me, I'd like to hear from some other home-based businesses because I can't imagine that they would like to uh, like that too much. It's automatically. It's, it's automatically. automatically. It's automatic. It's automatic. You come and say you're shutting it down. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's all, we the way this is set up is that you're automatically re renewed. Okay. That, unless, that's, that and, helps. And what happens though a lot of times and it's happened where where I had this implemented before was that people would not tell us they stopped. Is usually the biggest. That's the biggest cause. Not that they're continuing, they just would not yeah. tell us that they finished they're their not, occupation. Yeah, you know, I think registration can be an online process, so it doesn't have to be a hardship to do this. And I think, again, I go to the same Mike brings up, is that this is to protect the neighborhood. The intent is to protect the neighborhood, so we know what's going in there. And if your guy does say, well, I'm going to put a car repair business, you say, that doesn't qualify. Yeah. So that takes care of that problem in the, from the get-go. Uh, and then if he does do it, then he's in violation of the first step. Well, you also have, a, if, you're, if you're a prudent home buyer, like you said, and you're looking at a neighborhood and there's five home-based child care places there, and I know they can only have, I think it says five or whatever it is, but there's, you know, and you go and, and you go into you buy a house and you don't do any checking, and you find out you've got a child care here and child care here that has kids in the backyard all day, both days. Shame on you, you should have gone in and checked. But if you go in and check it, you find out whether it's, you know, looking at this house here and next door is a registered legal child care facility. I may say, well, I don't know that I want to live next door to that, so I may live somewhere else. I, mean, yeah. I think that's the intent. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and you know, the, the home base, the child home base centers that I know of. Uh, for, for me, the problem isn't so much the kids in the backyard all day, it's the cars in the street morning and afternoon. <laughs> uh, that, it's traffic. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the traffic. Thing. I think it, yeah. it's traffic. You know, I mean, I but if I'm, I'm working a second shift and I take a nap, I don't want little kids out there no. keeping me awake. No. That's like dogs. a barking dog. Yeah. We gotta have a, we gotta have an order for shooting those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my concern on the expiration down here is it's going to be hard to review and confirm compliance if they don't do it, like you say, voluntarily. Yeah. And I think once a list is developed, registration, then that would allow apparently anybody wanting to know to go on the city's yeah. uh, website and, and we could certainly, search their street, maybe. We could certainly set it that way, I think, to where you could do it online. Out of curiosity, how many, how many home-based businesses are there in Kirkland, more or less? Do you have any idea? No. no. You only hear about the complaints, which was 250 or so? Well, those weren't for home-based, but that, those were all, those for, first, for the first of the year, or our fiscal year to date, we had 250 code-compliant cases. So total code. How many, how many home-based businesses we don't get that many calls on home-based businesses. We've only had a few in the past. Yeah, Donna generated this list, but mostly out of the telephone book, didn't Right, you? Yeah. Our internet. And all the child care I got off of the state website. So those are uh, right child there. cares that are registered they have with to, the state. Well, they, they should register. They should be. Let me throw this out, too. I, I think that what we're doing here is good. I don't think any home-based businesses would, would not like what we're doing. But I think this registration, that's the one that if, if, if you're going to run into issues with all the home base operators, it's going to be that one. And, and that's why I said if there's a way to do this without that, I think it's, there's much less risk to having a, a, a backlash. 
Well, why do you think that there would be, if I'm operating a, a legal conforming home based business, which, why would I object to registering my business? Which I've done. And why? It's why? just another layer. I mean, I, you know, you don't, when you, when you start a business at your house, I mean, that's the last thing in your world you're, you're, you, you're dealing with. I mean, it, you know, there are things you have to do to comply, but why are we adding another layer there? I, and I don't see any benefit. I, I, I haven't yet seen the benefit. Five minutes to register your business. I, I mean, if you're gonna, but I, I still haven't you, seen the benefit of it. You don't see, you don't see the benefit of protecting the neighborhood from home-based businesses or what? people knowing that there's home-based businesses. You don't think that's no. No, I, no, I don't. If they don't know that there's a home-based business there, then, then, what's, then there's, what are they there's no from? violation. Well, that's that's great for you. That's great for you. But what, mm -hmm. what I'm saying is, there are there are home-based businesses that generate traffic and generate noise that are legal. Such as the day, like you mentioned, know, childcare. The daycare center. It could be someone having giving massages four or five times a day. It could be. Look at all these things in there. Okay. Well, then, then maybe you know, what you're describing, maybe those could be registered. You can't. But why, why does the guy that, that works on a computer at his house, what, why does he need to register his business? Uh, I think you made it twice, ten times as hard. You're going to have more arguments about people registering and not registering if you do classifications. It, you know, another, I mean, Kerrville has had a reputation as being a, a difficult place to operate a business, and, and right or wrong. I don't, I don't believe that's even correct. But that's the, the reputation, and I, I think we just should tread lightly before we start adding those kind of things on top of it. I think, and I don't even know if I'm allowed to speak from sitting here, but I guess sure. I'll say my piece. I think that if you're operating from the home, from my, from my wife looking into it for about a hot minute with her speech therapy uh, business, you know, we had far less to worry about than having to go rent an office space. And so from, my, from our perspective, from looking both sides to it, I can tell you, from, if we just had to register from here for like the, the paperwork that would involve that was going to be far less than having to go worry about occupying a building uh, or going through the hardships of that. So I feel like that if thinking from our personal experiences of starting a business, um, it was easy. It would, have still, it would have still been one more thing, right? One more thing we had to worry about. But that one more thing would have been far less than all the obstacles of renting or purchasing property to then because we already had the property, you know that that was that's our thought behind why we were going to make it a home business. I mean, ultimately we didn't do it, but that's that's why we were going to start a home business. So that one more thing maybe wouldn't have been that much of an added. Well, I think step. most home businesses are like your wife. Let's just use that as an example. I'm going to start my own business on the computer or whatever I'm going to do. That's just me doing it. There's nobody coming to my house. There's no activity. It's when it becomes an activity. So if I, my business grows and I'm now interacting with more people, they're going to come by the house. Now, one person every hour is not going to be a big deal. Car comes, car leaves. It's when a construction guy now has four right. or five contractors pulling trailers <laughs> and pulling up for assignments and payments and billing and so forth, and he's there for an hour. And he's pulling a trailer full of stuff. This is what I see on our street. Right. So guy down the street. Same our street, There's too. a tree. There, here comes a truck with his trailer three or four times a day. Now, if there's kids in the street, I'm, I'm anxious, I'll just tell you about it. And I'm not happy that he's coming down the street. Now, what can, what can I do about that personally? If he's registered and he registered his business, he's in compliance, if he got that from the very, very beginning. So the registration doesn't do anything but let me know, to Michael's point, is that that business was there five years ago. But at some point, if he starts to collect, he may go beyond that point and, and the ordinance may kick in and says, you can't do this. You can't have trucks and trailers and cars down the street. I mean, I don't know. If there's, so well, a lot of times, this a lot is the initial times, step. Yeah. And I understand the initial step to me is, is it helps the city, I think, more importantly, and helps me as a potential buyer that there are things in my, on my street that I may or may not want to buy in that neighborhood. Providing the home buyer information. And that's what I see. Step that. And in some cases, in, in other places where, where I've, we've used a similar ordinance, you know, the city has gone to the, to the contractor, be it a plumber, electrician, or whatever, right. and say, you know, man, you, you, you've reached that limit. It's time for you to start looking for a place to, to operate That's your nice. business outside your house. 
I mean, you've got you've got a crew now of five. You've got five trucks with your name on it. You've got five trailers. Yeah. The backyard's full of pipe or whatever. And now you've gone past the home occupation, and you need to start looking for a, for a where, office warehouse yeah. somewhere. Uh, we've uh, we've had to do that on occasion, but you know you let them get to that limit, and then you say, okay, you know, you, you now you've pushed the envelope about as far as we can go. The neighbors are complaining. Uh, it's it's time to move. <coughs> And, 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 you know, this is a good, you know, the home-based business, you know, a lot of, a lot of contractors that I know started with a home-based business. They started their own business out of their garage, one well, truck, it, you know, and this, then now they're in, you know. Well, this whole, a lot of times we have people come with non-conforming yeah. requests because they're going to change their business location, and we contact 200 people around them and tell them yeah. within 200 feet or whatever it is. And they say, no problem. You know, AirTech was in here and they reestablished their building and we approved that. So, I mean, we, we participate in this activity yeah. when it's going beyond the, the compliance. Would there be any option to, I mean, maintain registration on the businesses that you know uh, could create a nuisance? residential area because I think somebody just using their computer for stuff I mean to me that's never gonna be a nuisance other than traffic but then you start getting into who's on it who's not registration for me is not necessarily the issue for me having an ordinance to enforce is the issue. I have no ordinance to enforce. Right. But, yeah, we, know, and I agree with that. We get into situations, not necessarily in, in, in home occupancy, but we get into situations <laughs> where people open businesses in the city uh, and we have no registration for a business license whatsoever. And then we find out when they come in and they want to get a sign for their business that they've invested money and time into an area where that use is not allowed. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that that's bad. So, you know, yeah. home business registration, you know, it could be looked at in a positive way as far as you could have a list at the city in our offices or whatever of home businesses, you know, that if people were looking for accountants or looking for architects or looking for somebody, here's a list of home occupancies, you know, here in the city. Maybe, maybe these would fit your needs, you know. I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I know what you're saying, but with their permission. the ordinances yeah. that are being created, right? Are there a tool for you to use? Right. As an Compliance officer, that's right. but the purpose of them is to protect the citizens of Kirby. That's correct. So, you know, I, I agree with you. It doesn't make your job maybe any easier, any harder. It's a tool for you, but the purpose of the ordinance is, is <coughs> codes is to protect the citizens right. of Kirby. Right. It's not to make that. our job. And you're right. I can't do that without an ordinance to, right. to enforce. And yeah, so and and, and right problem. right now that without a a, a business license or a requirement for a change of use occupancy um, Danny and I we can't track businesses that are in commercial areas now we can't we don't know when they when they stop operating when they reopen <coughs> where they move to because we don't have that opportunity and I mean this would be a, a you know well if they're in a commercial environment it's not they're meeting the codes of the commercial well they, well sometimes they do not? sometimes they don't oh okay well, I would say uh, maybe uh, to keep us kind of moving forward, this registration is a piece that y'all might want to look at based on our comments. You know, we're not married to it. I'm not, I'm not married to it as much as I am to getting Danny something that he can use to inform. Yeah. Exactly. Um, any other comments on the registration piece? No. Uh, expiration. That is that is tied to the regi to the registration. Yeah. So if we're, okay. we're going to move off of that, let's just okay. move down to the uh, standards of operation. Uh, B is next. Now these standards and, and 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 the thing that I I always try to emphasize, and I've done this in a number of cities, is to make sure that that you that you stay focused on one thing, and that is that. As nondescript as some of these look, these are still businesses. 
These are commercial operations in a residential area. And, and a child care may not, you know, that may just be part of life. That there's a daycare center. Uh, but but they, they are uh, commercial operations. And, and so the idea behind the, the operational standards is to minimize the impact of that business on the neighborhood. So that's, that's the basis I want you to look at. I want you to look at, look at it from that perspective that we're not trying to keep them out. We're just trying to, to minimize their impact. So, no, so I when, like, you go down, when you go down that list, I, yeah. that's what I want you to keep in mind. I like the second paragraph, 100 standards of operation. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. Any questions on that or any comments? Uh, I mean, if, if we move down to employees, I think I, I agree with what that's got stated there, that once you have somebody coming every day to, to clock in or do work, then that's a point where you need to be in a in a different building. Um, do the daycare centers, the ones that are home occupations, is it only the one person, or do they bring in other people? Oh, yeah, they bring other people. Yeah, according to this, they're supposed to only, only, for, only, only be one. The residents can work there. Right. I'm just saying the current ones. I was now curious. some some ordinances like this will will allow for up to two people to, to work in the business. But it's like a husband-wife team. I mean, it's a tag team kind of thing. Where, or, it's a, or it's a mother daughter, mom and a, and, a, and, a, and a single daughter with a child, and now they're, they're keeping other kids. So they've got, they're both working the daycare center. But it's, but it's not bringing outside, like Garrison, it's not bringing outside people into the home right. to operate the business. Maybe we're not saying that right. You have to be an occupant of the home to work in the business. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to that's gonna really help to, yeah. to make these operations. So, so that's, a, that's something that, that you can, you know, we can look at modifying that if you want or if you just want to leave it the way it is to start with and then have that as something to add to later. I think that's in the spirit of what we're trying to do. It's supposed to look like a house. You're bringing in a bunch of employees and... That doesn't look like a house anymore. Right. How many people do you need to grow grass in there? <laughs> yeah. That's the next big bit business. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> K-Pub can monitor that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think the space, the 25% of the living area, maximum, I, that seems to make sense. Yeah, I did a quick calculation at our house. I'm using about 10%, and that's enough room for a desk and a workstation and a small conference table and and uh, and some storage. And so I think 25%. Standard, uh, sort of the standard in the in the business. You go out and you look. You know, say business, but you go out and look at other ordinances. For some reason, they've latched on to 25%. Now, I, I don't know where that came from, but that you'll find be, that pretty standard number. That should be very sufficient for a you know. Oh, yeah. Thing. And especially, like, person? especially oh. thinking about, like, with the daycare, because it's just funny that this is... Hell, that's the whole one. This is where my daughter goes to daycare. And, uh, you know, Nanny, we go in there every day to pick her up. I would say it's, even with the daycare of six kids, it's far less than 25% of their house. Like I can tell you, right behind that van is she's got, and she got a permit, I can tell you that. Uh, she got it fixed up to where it looks good and uh, she, it's less than 25% of the whole house. So even with a daycare, 25% should be more than nothing. Anyway. And they do go play in the backyard too, yeah. When you get to the storage thing, yes. I mean, you're really saying two different things. That, that needs to be yeah, the, the the idea for that was, was uh, in, in a couple of places um, where the the contract the one man contractor has got pipe or he's got materials that need to be stored and and, and we worked we tried to work around or with them so that if they're going to do that we just don't want to see it from the street. Now I I have no problem taking that out. Well, I just think you've got to do, you've got to modify the first one. I mean, you're, you've got two completely different things. But yeah. you say you can't have any outside storage. You can't, you can't you have say any. If you do have outside storage, it's got to be hit. Kind of contradictory. So that has to be rewritten okay. in some fashion. I mean, I don't really have a problem. 
I, I mean, again, th this is the issue. You got a home based business, and you got a guy that stored pipe in his backyard. Well, you can't see it from the street, but his neighbors can see it. Their neighbors go out in their backyard street. and they're looking at a bunch of pipe in the backyard. I, I think that's probably not a good idea. What if he stores it in the garage? Well, it, it says garage is included in the first one. Storage shall be enclosed within the residence, which includes an attached garage. But it says it only has to be visible, not be visible from the public right away. Yeah, but which is a street. Yeah. doesn't cover the back like that's you're talking about. Right. If he's my next door neighbor and he's got 10, 10 stacks of pipe in his backyard, you can't see it from the street. No. I'm not real happy about that. I would that. agree. We'll take that out. That's not a problem. I mean, I, I don't know that there's not a way to help someone. Yeah. Maybe they have to put a storage building in the back right. or something yeah. where you need a storage building, you know, yeah. and the neighbors can't see it from their backyard. Because I do have a contractor I know of that he's in the plumbing business and he is screened from public view, but behind that are dishwashers and toilets and all sorts of stuff piled <laughs> in the backyard. Yeah. So I mean, if you had a storage building, yeah, I guess yeah, you, they could put it in the storage building. I guess you, you could ride it here on your back porch. Want to have a barbecue and you're like that unless your neighbor says I don't want to see it. Yeah. What we could do is we could add to that add that, that, that <coughs> it, not only can you do it in an attached garage, but a but a permitted accessory building. Mm -hmm. Well, where everything's inside. Yeah. yeah. Right. Not visible by the neighbors, I guess. Yeah. I mean, maybe the neighbors don't care. I don't know. But then if someone complains, yeah. it's got to be able to be addressed in this these ordinances. Yeah. We can work with that. Okay. Anything else? We go down that list. Number four. <coughs> Number five. I guess my question on equipment is the installation stores the use of any equipment or machinery not normally found in a household. That's going to be awfully hard to enforce, I think, without, that, that is always, without registration. That is always... Uh, uh, Interesting topic that gets brought up. What is normal yeah. uh, equipment in the house? Yeah, say normal in general. Yeah. It, um, well, if a guy's doing, uh, you know, woodwork in his garage, yeah. this is not, no, that's not normal for household. Yeah. But it's pretty common it's for pretty guys common. to have saws and zip the way. Our metal work, welders. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people have. We're in an area that, you know, is a lot of retired people and they've got a wood shop in the garage. Yeah, sure if they're doing it for themselves, yeah. that's one thing. Or they build a birdhouse to sell at the, at the, <laughs> at the <laughs> farmer's market or something. You know, I mean, I, so, I know so guys that do that. Year. So, <laughs> so it, it's always been a tough, a tough topic to deal with. I think under sales and display, the only thing I put in there is uh, direct on-site sales, retail, or wholesale, but I think it needs to be and or the display of goods or products. How, how would this affect the Mary Kay lady or whatever who's... It's, isn't That's that, a home-based business. Yeah, isn't that a direct sales? A lot, of that, a lot of that's delivered, isn't it? Yes, it's it's brought to your house. I don't know, but yeah. I'm just yeah, I, know. I think what you do is they they come and look at it, and they pick out what they want, and then and Mary Kay order, girl comes to your house. You, you make a good point because yep. if someone comes to their house and just picking up cosmetics, young lady that was here, young. Uh, I know that. Can that be addressed with a, a limit on inventory or something like that? Um, well, it 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 kind of is in in the twenty five percent of the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know the, the the lady my wife buys her stuff from goes to her office. She feels she orders it from the office and she delivers it to the office. Yeah. I mean, exactly. I think most of that. I have a question on number seven. Now, what is orders? I think it's odors. Oh, it's supposed to be odors. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we're too. not all. We're, we're, we're not all great at the computer. Orders no, okay, good. Your wife. Yeah. <laughs> I know it. Yeah, I know yeah. that. And that, that is a nuisance. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Which is the nuisance. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. And next thing under traffic. Uh, the home. Well, it says home occupation will not involve the regular visits of et cetera, et cetera, to the residence to conduct. 
to the conduct of the home occupation. In my note says, eliminates most of the occupations in the current regulations. There's always, almost Absolutely. always gonna be somebody coming or going. Yeah, yeah, again, regular, regular business, I mean, that's a big term. Regular, the idea is you know that you're gonna have, and, and, and some of the permitted uses that you'll get to in the bottom, you'll see where, where you know, we, we said that, that if you're gonna do this, you can only have five students a day. Well, the, generally they don't teach every day. Right. So, uh, but it, it, this is just one of those things. You don't want to create a traffic problem, but you don't want to prohibit people from having some visitations to the house, especially when the, uh, you know, I had a, uh, I had a music teacher at a, on a PNC in another city that just threw a fit because he taught piano at his home and the kids sure. came and he had four or five kids a day come over and take piano lessons. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so that's why I've always left that in there. Well, I was gonna bring up that number two and because I, I taught lessons for a little bit. I know that people have taught lessons before and you know, they, it's always more than five. So I'm like you said, it's typically what I've seen for people that do it for a living. Yeah. It's usually eight. And then because usually it's about a 30 minute lesson. Uh, so eight a week, cause they would try to get 40 a week. Eight times five is 40. And same thing when it came to therapy sessions. Well, this is per day though. This doesn't say per week. No, but I'm saying is if they see eight a day, they're trying to get 40 a week. Oh, okay. So, but my point is, is five, if they see five students for 30 minutes, they're done by 11 a.m. if they start at eight. You know what I'm saying? So, I, and same thing with speech therapy, physical therapy, if they're running it out of their home and they see some, they're trying to get eight a day to make it that 40 a week, um, that, that, that could be an issue for some professions, I think, uh, that are trying to go full time versus someone that's doing minimal once a day, once a week type thing, depending on the profession. And how do you deal with on-street parking? Yeah. I mean, that's Because there's no it. prohibition, is there? No, there's no, there's no prohibition on on-street parking. There are very few streets in the city of Kerrville that, that if you look in the parking standards where they are prohibited by ordinance. There are very few. Can we get one of those for our street? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same thing. But it, but we're certainly not we're certainly not tied to five a day. If you think if you think the neighborhoods can handle more than that, or if you want to start with, you want to. It would be it's a lot easier to go up than it is to come back down. Yeah. Well, I think, and of course, we're not talking about every individual that's going to do this. Yeah. I just don't want to hold back that profession I mean again using my wife as an example I guarantee you she would have tried to see at least eight a day because her less her, th her speech therapy uh, sessions are only 30 minutes yeah. so if she's allowed to only see five a day by state by code then she's not really go she's not allowed to go full time basically by the code so that's the only reason I bring it up is because <laughs> you're gonna have that individual in music in some type of therapy and dance or in the fine arts that may want to go full time but again also, maybe not, yeah. but it could be the case down the road. Yeah. Well, yeah, I will by no means tell you this is perfect. So, you know, we're willing to move anything around that you need to move around. Uh, uh, number 10, advertising. Uh, I do like that. I think if you're going to advertise, you need to be in a, a business district or at least a transitional uh, district. Oh, uh, I disagree. <laughs> so do you think you can put your sign up on the front of your house? So that's my question. I think that a sign should be allowed. It should be restricted in size, kept small, um, and have a setback to it. You know, um, a garage can be as close as 19 feet. You're talking about a yard sign or you're talking about a wall mounted sign? Either one. Um, I think, you know, mine at my house is pole mounted. I mean, it's it's not set in concrete or anything, uh, and it's small, but it's 30, 25, 30 feet off of the property line. I think if it if you do it as a setback, and if and if if regulation said I needed to take that sign and put it on the wall or on the house, I could do that. I, 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 um, I think if you've got the proper setback, I think it's okay. 
Yeah. Now, I have I have seen these in, in in other cities to where they will allow one, you know, wall yeah. mounted yeah. sign yeah, that put, says. You put, a, you put a, a maximum size, maximum, you know. Well, this says two square feet in the current. Yeah. Let let me uh, bring you back a couple of different. Uh, what about the advertising? Other language. About, about advertising, uh, a couple advertising of different signs that, that other cities have used. Uh, yeah, anytime I, well, I, I, mean, I, I don't have a regular ad in the paper. But what if you do, do you put your Yes, I do. I put my address on there. Um, you know, my website has my address See, on I, it. I'm not so sure. I think that's an issue because I actually think that's a benefit to the, to the, to the residents, the neighborhoods anyway. They know that there's mm -hmm. a business there. Well, this is one of those cases where it varies from city to city. Yeah. Some cities don't want these things advertised at all. Others don't care. Others want, they don't mind the, the uh, electronic media advertising. They don't want a sign in the front yard. Some will, will go with a small, you know, yeah, two we'll square foot, two square that foot that mounted to the house. The it, everyone's strong. different. So mm -hmm. what I'll do is I'll run past a couple of other variations on advertising let y'all look at it uh, and no lighting on yeah the sign no light they won't be lighted no. yeah it won't be lighted. Yeah. but, but uh, i've got a i've got a little folder full of other home occupation ordinances i can look at and mm -hmm. bring some down is there no is there no i mean when i would, if, if you're a real estate broker you literally i don't know if the texas code is but in florida if i'm a real estate broker if i'm operating on my house i have to have a sign on the door that says michael sigerman a licensed real estate broker mm -hmm. that's the law yeah is that not the case no that's not the case for an architect okay. no um but you know having that sign helps clients find my house in my driveway and not circle the neighborhood or or pull into somebody else's driveway to turn around and they know exactly where they're going it's just really for me it's a wayfinding Tool. Have you ever had any of your neighbors complain? No. See, I think if it's set back mm -hmm. properly, I think that's... If it's appropriately set up. Yeah. Not too big. I'll run some, I'll run some possibilities back to Here's the news now. Now the, the list of the permitted uses is really just a list. I'm not too worried today about the number of students. It's more the, the list of uses itself that, that these are pretty common um, home occupations. Is there a need to list permitted occupations? Can we just list? Um, prohibited? No, you can list just prohibited. Yeah, this would be a long list if you put the yeah. It's hard to make ones that are completely mm -hmm. permitted list. Well, uh, and and then you could have you know somebody that's a permitted home occupation, but then is you know is violating half of the. Well, that's Codes. where that's where you're gonna. That's where a lot of it's gonna be. Yeah. It's gonna be that I, I am a, a you know I'm a I'm a dressmaker or I'm a tailor, but I'm running. You know I've got four employees and, mm -hmm. and 25 people a day coming to the coming to the house. Um, yeah, it almost takes away a argument there in a way. Yeah, it it, it, well, it makes that hard argument a little harder. I think. Yeah. I think you make a good point, and, and this is again where the registration helps a little bit. If you just Prohibited uses. If someone is not sure, maybe they're going to come to come to this city and say, "This is what I do. Can, am I allowed to have a home-based business?" Yeah. I mean, you know, like you said, some are going to go around. They're, they're not going to rush you. They're not going to let you know. They're going to go to leave. But over the course of time, over the course of getting this thing enforced and getting the registration, whatever it is, eventually, you probably will get rid of a lot of. You won't get. Under the prohibited, are we covering all the ones that we need to cover? I don't see construction or contractors in this. <laughs> on the on the prohibited use, mm -hmm. um, no. I mean, it's it's. Um, yeah, I, yeah, and I mean, as a contractor, 
who started a business in a house and then grew to a point where it was time, and actually I wanted that time to happen as fast as possible. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't think we should pick an industry and just say, because when I ran that business, you wouldn't even know I was there. I agree. I, know, think, I, mean, I think if you provide the services and it doesn't interrupt, it's not something right. that's going to interrupt the neighborhood. Yeah. I, I don't know that it But we've identified things. vehicle repair. What, well, there's a lot of things you can, like what you yeah. Grooming of animals. Grooming dogs, repair services, manufacturing, firearms, and stuff like that. That's, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know how that one's going to really go over with, you know, with the city as a whole. I mean, if you if you go back and look at the the, the list today, of of uh, that are listed under the home occupation of the ordinance today, you'll find at the near the bottom you'll find gun spending. Mm -hmm. We had an individual come, and it was when I was here the first time, so it's been like seven or eight years ago, yeah, and he good. came to the city and petitioned to have that he was a gunsmith. And and have that included, and and, be and the reason he did that was that the uh, uh, ATF, in order to get your license, they they require a letter from the city saying that, saying that either the sale of firearms or the gunsmith is permitted use. And he was moving here from Missouri or someplace, if I remember right, and and he needed that letter. And at first we said no. It's not allowed, and then he was persistent enough that he had the ordinance changed. I'm going to tell you my personal opinion. That's something you need to take a hard line on for this ordinance because you want to talk about hot buttons. And, and a lot of most cities that I've that we've I've worked home occupations, they do not want someone coming <coughs> to to my neighbor's <coughs> house no. to buy to buy custom ammunition and firearms. I wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, but it goes on here all the time. Oh, it does. Oh, but they're not licensed. No, not that makes any difference. There's licensed guys who sell yeah. guns in this town and will yeah. bring the gun to your house. Yeah. I so, bought one or two. So that's going to be, a, <coughs> that, that's generally a, 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 a pretty hot, hot topic when this goes to public. When, when we put this up for a public hearing to where we're actually, mm -hmm. you know, discussing. It, it's, it's. That's yeah. on both sides of that oh, issue. Yeah, about no, that. It's on, there are both sides of that argument. Oh, yeah. Well, it's Second Amendment. Yeah, there are people well, who are... I mean, I understand Second Amendment, but again... That says the right to bear. I've got... I've got <laughs> so you got to get them before you can bear them. Yeah. <laughs> and i got a guy next door to me that's a gunsmith that's keeping guns on his, in, his, in his house and selling guns and working on guns. I mean, you can... You can Say all you want, but it only takes one person to get a hold of the one gun. Mistake. <coughs> and, and the thing with the gunsmith is that, that this particular individual, I never could, you know, um, you know, when you go and you have your car repaired, you always like to have them crank it up and make sure it works. Well, when, I, when you take a gun to have it repaired, yeah, you can't crank it up. How do you test it? And and now if you if you if you go on the internet now, you can find a homemade uh, the box you yeah. can shoot in. Yeah, a box that you can shoot in, and you can buy all the materials that tractor supply. Yep, that's true. So I don't want anybody living close to me that has a loaded weapon, especially a high-powered rifle. Yeah, yeah. So I've seen the damage they can do through the walls of a house oh, yeah. or oh, the yeah. window of a house. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So, like I said, this is, you know, with, with the, the, the two biggest topics that, that, that I have encountered over the years in, in doing this has been um, the registration and the sale of firearms. Those are the two biggest. Two items. Think about it. You can be very careful to do everything you want, yeah. but if it becomes known that you're a gunsmith and you've got firearms in your house, could be a target for burglary, you could be, a, you know, someone could want to break in and steal one. I mean, you can protect it, you can have a safety and everything, but <coughs> I, mean, it's, it, I, I don't mind the business, I, the business is fine. But then a residential neighborhood to me is a no-no. So, yeah, no it is. So let's just, just for, for, my, for my sake, do you want a list of permitted uses or just a list of I would prefer to try it without listing permitted uses and, and focus on the 
Prohibited use. Prohibited uses. That's okay. my personal okay. opinion. Right. Anybody, anybody else feel that way? And I, I, I'm not sure how exact you should be. You need to have some flexibility in there yeah. for something that's <coughs> not on either list that you determine when they come in that you don't want. That's a good point. You should have some discretion. These are, these are the prohibited uses, and this is subject to review or subject to, I don't know how you do it. That's illegal. And, 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 that, and your purpose clause, in my opinion, kind of covers yeah. what, what the but, permitted uses. But, and I'm going to do this in defense, of, in defense of Danny, in defense of the next uh, city planner, is you do not want your staff making that decision. If you're going to to say that here's a list of prohibited uses, but if you can prove X, Y, and Z, you can do it. That needs to be done at, at either at this level or at board of adjustment or somebody. It does not need to be done in the staff. No, I, I agree. With you. I don't think I would do that. I don't think I would word anything like that. Interpreting. Yeah, I don't want staff. I don't want staff out there going. Well, I believe it was the intent of this. No. That you know you go that way. I don't want staff to. Well, G the phrase you always see is including, but not limited to. Yeah. Yeah. But if you do that, then what they're going to say, what's the what's the not limited to list look like? You make the presentation. Yeah. And and, and somebody that? has to make the determination. You want it here? You want it as a as a change that they have to go through PNC and council to do, or is it a, a variance change that they go to P and uh, board of adjustment? I don't know that I'm You're saying if we have permitted like yeah, something that's we, not on no, the list, if, we would if, approve if, or if we if we go to and we and where we have only a list of prohibited uses. Okay, all right. Okay. And and then someone comes in and says, Well, I'm not on this list, so I must be permitted. Right, that's this is a pretty small list. Yeah, it's pretty short. Yeah. In fact, your permitted ones is longer. Mm hmm Much longer. And in fact, I think the permitted ones, you know, they're always questioned. Let's go to the artisan section. It's, well, we that's that's always open to interpretation. Well, that's what, a, that's a bad. I think what Russ has said is language. a good point. Your purpose of this, the purpose of this ordinance needs to be very specific. And if something <coughs> is maybe not on the, on the prohibited list, but you can plainly see <coughs> it violates the purpose right. of the ordinance, then you have a basis to say no, you can't do. I mean, he could create a nuisance or something like that. I think that's probably a good point. What's that? Yeah, very, your purpose of, you know, of the ordinance when you, when you start with this thing, you, you explain why this is, exists. It's very specific what you don't want to have. <coughs> yeah. it. You, know, you don't want a nuisance or whatever it is. And then if someone comes up and says, well, I'm not on this permitted list. This is what I do. I should be able to do it. Then you can go to that and say, no, They have to meet those requirements of the purpose. By what the purpose of this ordinance is, is you, you would be violating the purpose of the ordinance, even though you're not specifically listed. No, no, I mean, that, th this is going to be. But it all, that almost becomes a judgment call of the, of the person you're talking to. I don't to. disagree with you. I think this is going to be a bear. I mean, you may have to, you may have to take the time and just look at everything you can possibly look at and put it on there prohibited. Or you may have to go the other way and look at everything you think would be a home-based business. And but that's the list you would you would prefer that we that we look at as the prohibited list and not so much the permitted list. Well, that seems to be uh, the concern of the enforcement yeah. group. Yeah. yeah. What certain sure. things they know they don't want to be permitted. Yeah. But this is where you know you're, you and, and Donna will be involved, and that is if, if well, you know, is it easier to work from prohibited or permitted? Well, it would be it would be it would be great to have the permitted in there just so that you cover a lot of area, you know, and so that you I guess you could put wording in there that if it has anything to do if it's not on the list, you know, you could have wording in there that says uh, addresses that doesn't uh, 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 adversely affect. That kind of goes you know, back. Safety and welfare. But that goes back to your purpose. To the purpose. I would put that back to uh, <coughs> making application either through the zoning board as to whether or not, if this use is not mentioned here, that they would maybe approve the use or someone. I, I don't know. You know. If it's not on the list, so then, you, then you go before the board to find out if you're allowed. How to word it, it, Yeah, I mean, if there was a, a on the permitted list that said any, any legal business that 
does not change the house in any way and doesn't affect any neighbor in any way, it meets all the standards. to me, then it should be automatically permitted. <laughs> but. Just to clarify, I mean, code enforcement's intention is not to be standing outside people's homes watching to see what they're doing. That's not what we do. But the ordinance in itself, if it's passed, it gives us a tool when there is a nuisance. When someone calls in and complains that, hey, I have a problem over here, right. it gives us the ability to do something about it. So, and that's why uh, enforcement in the city of Kerrville, we respect people's rights to sure. homeowners and business owners. I mean, we're not out there to harass people. It's just when we get into that situation where we have to be able to apply something, we need, it to, need something to apply. But yeah, you're correct. I, you know, well, what it says right here, it's in this rough draft. The city planner yeah. shall make all determinations as to whether any aspect of a proposed home occupation complies. Right. And those, as, and those aspects now are the, um, the standards of operation. They're not the use. Right. Okay, it's the operation of that use. So that, again, that gets back to the purpose. That would be, yeah. too, if you're saying that, if but, you then say that the, if it's not listed there and it's, a, it's in question, then it could be uh, applied for through, through the planner and or through the you know, zoning board as to whether or not it's been well, I think this paragraph says just that. Yeah, yeah, it does. But it, but it, it really this is that that's written to be more of a, a watchdog of the operations and not the use itself. It's it, it's you know the guy's got a we allow a, a one by two square foot sign and he's got a billboard in his yard. Okay, that's pretty obvious right. that, that he's not in compliance. Uh, th there'll be times when it'll be pretty five five students versus seven students that, that they want to change, they want a conditional use permit for their particular use at their particular residence to increase that. I mean, that's what that is set up for. It's not to decide what use is allowed. We, I don't no, it says if there's, a, I guess, any question. Yeah. It, it that'd be the route the, that you got. The regulations, the, the compliance with the regulations. Well, the last section is what we started talking about in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, what's pre-existing, what's grandfathered, what's well, not. Yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to add a, 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 another couple of sentences to the first paragraph that will uh, exclude certain uses. Yeah. That, that if you, even if you're operating now, that, that if this goes into effect, you're going to have a short fuse to get As an exception, give them so long to... Yeah. Get out of that business or move it. Yeah. Well, wouldn't that be the prohibited list? I mean, wouldn't that? I mean, I mean, why would we want to grandfather anything on the prohibited list? Well, you wouldn't. I mean, you, there would well, be one of those exceptions. You, you want to, you know, you want to give them a little time to. to okay. To, okay, that's fair. Yeah. 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 And, um, you know, yeah. Now, part of this too yeah. is that the second, the second part of that, yeah. of that, it covers that if we're not going to go forward with a registration uh, of these, then that whole, almost that whole second paragraph will go away because they, they won't have to prove any registration. So. You know, it'll be interesting because, I, and again, I've, I've said this before, I'm in favor of having businesses registered just for the point of view of the city's ability to, you know, to monitor, monitor. Them. But it will be interesting if, when this ordinance is done and published after hearings and everything, and ever, all the existing home-based businesses have to register. Yeah. That's going to be an interesting activity. Time. It's interesting in the fact that we don't know where they all are now. Yeah. <laughs> so how would we flush them out? So to well, speak. You, you know what? You won't flush them all out like Russell said. You. You'll have ones that are legitimate <coughs> existing home-based businesses and want to continue to operate legally. They'll, they'll register. Yeah. You'll have some that won't register. And well, if they're a nuisance, over time, I think over they'll be time, turned in. Yeah. yeah. Over time, I think that that will really benefit the city. You, you know, I'm sure there are ways that, that we could go out and look and do the sales tax through other kinds of things yeah. that are that that you know. Professional registration. So, so well, you could go to the comptroller's office. You have probably. to have 
as a, do you have to have a business license through the city? You can just no. go with, you've got your business. No, we don't have that. You're just a licensed architect and you don't have to get a, a license to operate from anybody. We don't have that. We, don't have we do, contractors do. You do? Yeah, but, but architects don't. Okay. Yeah, would you say contractor, build in the city, not to operate in the city. Right, right. Would, you, would you say that the majority of homeless yeah. businesses don't have to have, like if you're doing a, well, if you're doing a daycare, a, a, a legitimate daycare, you have to be registered with the state. Yeah. If you're a licensed massage therapist, you probably have to have a license. You have to have a license with the state. Mm -hmm. You know, like if me, I'm a licensed real estate broker. I, ha I have to have a license with the state. And you could pull those lists. Uh, businesses in are hard to have a license. In Kerrville, yeah. I mean, we can't. We, do, we don't. I mean, right now, the issue that, well, one of the issues that we're having. But then you have a business. Just because you own a license doesn't mean you're exactly missing. Exactly right. You may not be actively in the real estate guy. Exactly right. <laughs> the, other, the other use right now that is percolating up to a level that we're going to unfortunately probably have to get involved in, and that is bed and breakfast. Now, San Antonio just addressed that. Because we've got some, we know that we have some that did not go through the proper zoning change that's required. Now, you're going to see two in June that they're going through the proper channel. Mm -hmm. We know we've got a list that have it. And the question is, are they paying hotel motel tax through the state like they're supposed to? We don't know that. Now, we could pull up the the tax office and look, but well, all you got to do is Google oh. bed and breakfast. No, Google, Google, and Google and there Airbnb. They, there they list. Go, go Google yeah. Airbnb. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Airbnb they or, or uh, like VRBO, yeah. and there they are. Oh, the, the screen lit yeah. up. Oh, there's a lot of them here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it lit up. <laughs> yeah, we didn't want to know. <laughs> we mm -hmm. didn't realize. They yeah. may and it's in the city. Yeah. Violate. You know, can't be for more than three days, blah, 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 can't be for this or that. And some of those places get rented out for six months at a time when someone's building a house in a residential neighborhood. I wonder how that would fall into this. Well, we've got, uh, we've got some notes to, to start the process. I would appreciate if any of you have any more notes. You this want is a good draft, to good start. Really was. Yeah. Good yeah, discussion. I agree. Well, I like well done. Very um, comprehensive. We will, uh, first meeting, there won't be a meeting on the 18th. Okay. Yeah. There will be a very long meeting on June the 1st. So we have one on May I'll be gone, that one. Okay. And then one on June, June the 1st. So you said we did have one on the 18th. I hear that right? We do not have no, one. No, we do not on the 18th. Hold on, 6-1. 6-1 is the next meeting. June 1st, next one. Long meeting. Any other uh, comments or the need to be bought before this commission today? If not, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Motion, second. I'll second. All in favor, write in. Thank you. This is 5-0. We're adjourned. I have five.